Hello and welcome to the Charmed Life Podcast. This podcast is all about magic, metaphysics, mysticism, and the unconditional love of the universe. And I am your host here. My name is Trisha Carr. Well, I am so excited to connect with you in this episode. It's going to be just me sharing a little teaching, a little tips, a little some tidbits about how to work with your animals for healing and um, also animal communication and how to work with Saint Francis, the Ascended Master Saint Francis. So that's what I'm going to talk about in this episode. And as I head into this, I want to invite you to please subscribe to this podcast, follow it or subscribe to it. And also I would love it if you would leave a review, a review of stars or of actually making a comment. That would help me so very much. And then of course, if you would like to share it, that would be amazing. If you find this worthwhile, I would love to uh, meet your friends, if you will. (laughs) All right. Well, if you're new here, thank you so much for being here. And if you've been here a long time, thank you as well. But I feel like I want to preface this communication today with what it is that I do. And and I do, I mean, I do quite a lot of things. I am a spiritual teacher. I am a channel, an empathic channel. That means I work with people one-on-one, channeling their, their soul blueprint, healing, um, their soul lineage, meaning the different kinds of guides of light that they are working with. And of course, working through any uh, thing that we need to work through that might be trauma or things that we are attempting to manifest and being able to move along those lines. And that's my what I call my empath- empathic channeling sessions because we do have channeled messages from guides, from higher self, and but it's also, it serves as a reading. And I also do things in there like hypno healing because I am a hypnotherapist. Now, the what is really pertinent to this particular episode of the podcast is the fact that I am an animal telepath. I'm an animal communicator, people usually call it. Animal telepath and healer. That is also another session that I offer. It was actually the very first psychic skill that I opened up to in my spiritual awakening, if you will. And I've told the story many times. The first time that I uh, awoke to that, I mean, meaning that I knew that I was connecting telepathically with an animal, receiving messages from not messages, but communication, actually having a conversation with an animal. And it uh, in the first time I knew I was doing that and observed it very clearly after I had a spiritual awakening, which allowed me to even be open to that as a possibility. And the reason I say consciously was because it's something that we are doing. And, you know, like I've been doing it my whole life. And if, as I look back, the ways that I would communicate about animals and experience animals, it it was, I mean, the writing was on the wall. I just didn't realize that there was such a thing as animal communication, that it was like a psychic skill. And I wasn't open to psychic skills, (laughs) even like I didn't know about that. I knew about the gifts of the spirit from my church time. And, you know, there's a lot of overlap there. But, you know, being able to actually have a conversation that is in, you know, energetic, but just as clear with animals, you know, that wasn't something I was open to until after I had my spiritual awakening. Anyway, the first time that I had that intentional and what was actually evidential communication with an animal, it actually saved her life. Now, I'm I'm not going to tell the whole story right now. If um, I get through this first bit, and maybe I'll tell it, and if not... (laughs) You can find it on some other podcast or video. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. You guys are listening, right? You, you, whatever your intention is, maybe it'll, maybe we'll we'll do it together. But I want to talk to you about how you can work with your animals, and if you are an animal communicator or if you're an animal healer yourself, then I have a little technique that you might like to bring into your work. And if you're not, if you are just working with your own animals. I have a technique for you <laughs> as well. So first of all, I wanted just to do a little recap of animal communication and animal healing because it's all in the same kind of realm. So everyone, especially I would say everyone who who has animals in their family, animal family members, yes, I don't really use the word pet that much. Not that I have any judgment about someone else who uses the word pet. It's just me. I prefer animal family. <laughs> it feels more, I, I like it better. So that's what I mean when I say your animal family members. So those 
who love animals, you have animal family members, or maybe you just, even if you don't have animals in your family, but you really love nature and you commune with nature very deeply and uh, very viscerally, very passionately, well, then you do communicate with animals. And now if you want to enhance it as a skill, like I'm talking about where I know that I'm intentionally connecting telepathically with an animal and clearly receiving back information that is from them that is not from me and, you know, having evidential communication. The best way to do that if you wanted to start today on your own is to actually practice with animals who are not your family. And the reason for this is the same reason that I say that we all are communicating with the animals who are our family because we are so enmeshed consciously with our, in our consciousness with our animals it is like communicating with your liver you know what i mean like you can but you have to focus so deeply and you know you don't have the objectivity to know that there is a different voice happening because we are so um just unified with our own animal family and since it's in that subtle realm of telepathic communication that we're talking about. It's all in the feeling. It's all in the thinking. It's all in the, you know, the subtler energies as opposed to the overt energies of speech or when they are demonstrating to something to you, either verbally, because animals, a lot of them are verbal, or with their physical expression, then, you know, that's more overt and it's easier to detect what's going on. Your dog's wagging his tail. You know what that means happy. <laughs> He's scratching on the cupboard. That means give me some treats, give me some food. You know, um, in the subtler realms, that's how we are always flowing information, energies back and forth with our animals. And so when you, if you practice with animals who are not yours, that the literary voice in air quotes of that energy will not feel as much like your own because it feels foreign. It feels different than your own. Whereas if it's your cat, your dog, your horse, you are so enmeshed with them in the conscious energy, consciousness, I should say, really, not conscious mind, but consciousness, that it, it, you have to do a lot more deeper focusing. And, it's, and if you're working in, in healing, so if you have concern and you have, you're subjectively invested in the animal, like you want your dog to be well, it's, it's harder to get the objectivity and to trust that you are actually working with them in that way. However, the thing is your heart, your healing, your love energy is always working. It's always healing them. It's always helping them. Even if you, we can't get clear about the evidence of it. So you see what I mean? Okay. The best way that I can, my best example for why we would want to work with animals who are not ours as we practice to develop the skill of animal communication it's sort of like how it's really hard to tickle yourself. Like if you you like kind of tickle your arm like lightly, I mean, yeah, I think you get a little sensation. Um, but you could really focus and kind of like, you know, gently close your eyes and like, okay, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm feeling that feels a little more tickly. And it's harder to to get that distinction of your energy from your energy to have that sensation. Or another way to say it is like, like I said, what does your liver feel like? Uh, or what does your pinky toe feel like? I mean, you have to like really focus to kind of get a sensation of it. I mean, if it's not in pain, when it's in pain, it's really obvious. It's screaming at you. But you know what I mean? However, if a stranger even just gets into your energy field, like walks up behind you, you usually feel them. Or if they touched your shoulder, you really feel that. You know, it's very distinctive in your energy when it's someone that you are not always involved with. Okay, there's my preface for um, how you could start to practice yourself. Now, I actually am going to this year, I haven't scheduled it yet, but I'm going to be holding an animal communication training program. So if you're interested in that, we'll keep listening to the podcast. I'll, I'll also talk about it on Instagram. That handle is at Trisha Carr Charm. I will probably talk about it on YouTube as well. But more, most importantly is you want to, whenever you pull over, if you're driving your car, because most people listen to podcasts in the car or running or doing dishes, <laughs> you want to find the link in the description of this episode that leads you to my newsletter. 
subscribe to my newsletter. But you could also just go to my website, trishacarcharm.com, and you'll see a way to be able to subscribe to the newsletter. There's also on my on my website a little free, uh, it's a mini course, and it's um, for animal intuitive connection. So this is to help you to connect intuitively with your animals. And there's a free meditation download in there and everything. So go find that. I'll put a direct link in the description too. So you could click right through and that will help you to also sign up for my newsletter. All right. So there we go. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is direct communication with animals. This is the method that I teach. This is a method that I practice. And this is to say, as opposed to using divination tools to quote unquote, communicate with animals. And I want to explain to you what I mean by direct communication. Direct communication with an incarnated animal, I mean, you also can directly communicate it with past animals, that's mediumship. But we're talking about animals who are alive, incarnated in the body. I teach and I practice direct communication with that being like I'm talking to my husband, I'm talking to my friend, I'm talking to my cat, or I'm talking to your cat who, if we have an appointment, and I'm talking directly to them, that personality, that being incarnated. And you, may, if you're like, well, okay, what are you talking about? What's the difference? Well, the difference is that connecting with their higher self is different than connecting with their personality, you know? Connecting with their personality is it's just, again, it's like having, if you're going to talk to your husband or you're going to talk to your friend, you want to talk to them, you know, you may sometimes actually pull Oracle cards to say, help me to work on my relationship with this person, but you really want to talk to them at some point, right? You want to have direct communication with them. That's what is going to honor the relationship and honor the full position of that other entity, person, cat, dog, horse, you know, whatever it is. So they they have the capacity to have full communication with us. And that's the reason why I teach and practice direct communication. Now, when we use divination tools, that's not honoring that part of the relationship. We're, we're actually bypassing it. Having said that, in sessions and in my own, with my own family too, I do call on guides, and that's what this is about in, in a way, because we're going to talk about healing here in a moment. I do call on guides. So let's say I'm talking to a dog, and this is my funny little example I always give. I'm talking to a dog, and I say, what is the best meal for you? Well, the dog's opinion about that is like seven pounds of bacon, you know, but because <laughs> that's delicious. Now this, I'm being a little bit, this is kind of a hyperbole to say it so extreme like that because a dog can say, well, when I eat this, my body feels like this. You know, I get a tummy ache or I feel, you know, um, lethar lethargic or something like that. They can give you that feedback. But when we're talking about nutrition, you know, they can tell you how they respond to it. They might give you their opinion, which is again, just their kind of lusty preferences but when we're talking about something like nutrition, we might need to call in higher guidance. So I actually do, in a session, ask the dog, the cat, whatever, whatever it is that they can give us about that, what their opinion is, what their experience is. But if we need some higher guidance, I will ask spirit. I will ask their spirit guides. I will shift to the intuitive communication. But I actually start with the direct communication with the incarnated animal. And so thereby, we have the full... We have the full range of possibilities of whatever is good for us to know. All right. Well, that's just a recap about some things. Well, maybe it's brand new for you, but it's a recap for anyone who's either been in my animal communication sessions or if you've actually been in one of my programs. So that's that's animal communication. But I'm actually wanting to talk about animal healing, working with healing energy. So I want to share with you what's been going, a little personal story. Um, the last two weeks I have been dealing with my own animal family, my cats. One particular cat, my Franzi, if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen the story that I posted where my little Franzi, who by the way is famous, he is, he's a famous cat, that's all there is to it. 
He has like 18 million views on YouTube. He is the star of Best Kitty Hug Ever, which is a video from 2014 that went viral <laughs> and still keeps viralizing. Um, and it's just, it's a video where he asks, he's meowing at my husband and he he's asking what I'm saying. He wants a hug. And then he stands all the way up and reaches up for my husband. So you've seen either my video or you've seen other cats, cat videos like that probably. Anyway, so my, my sweet little Franzi, who's 10 years old, was doing a regular everyday run around the house, just being silly. And he twisted and sprained his ankle really bad. I mean, he couldn't put any weight on it. And it's it's been two weeks now since he did that. And it's getting better. It's really getting better. And he, he had to put it, they had to get a splint on it, which looks like a cast. And he promptly kicked that off in two days. And anyway, he's he's on the mend. And then... In addition to that, just the last couple of days, my other cat, Barnabas, has started to get finickier and finickier with his food. And I'm like concerned because not eating can be a symptom of, of a serious disease like kidney failure. And he's been to the he's been to the doctor fairly recently, but you know, anyway, the point is, you know, of course I can communicate with him, right? Well, yes. However, what I was telling you earlier is the objectivity. If I'm worried, if I'm invested, it's harder for me to trust what I'm hearing. It's harder for me to focus. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's more challenging. And I absolutely can do it, and I have done it now. And by the way, none of this negates medical attention. Let me just tell you that. It only supports it. So anyway, the I have to really do a lot to disconnect from the worry, to really expand and get eternal, and to, you know, get into the space where I'm pulling through information that is unconditional and, you know, just unconditionally open to the highest good. That's what I that's what I have to do. And so I I am able to do that when I have concerns for my animals. And uh, that's what I'm doing right now, as well as taking them to, you know, the doctor. So let's just say there are concerns going on. There are physical and may, maybe emotional or mental things going on with your animal. So now it's time for healing. And now for these messages. Creation of the outside world really does start inside. You can feel better and receive more. Miraculous shifts happen when you align your inner world with your higher self and your soul blueprint. My clients report immediate and long-lasting results of the inner and outer world. I channel guidance and energy transmissions from your higher self and spirit team. As you resonate with the transmission, change occurs. In sessions and coaching, mentoring, I use my abilities of empathic channeling, hypno-healing, quantum resonance healing, as well as spiritual counseling, neuro-linguistic programming, and so much more. Check out my calendar for my session work and my coaching and mentoring. I would love to work in your beautiful energy. Hello, my friend. It's Trisha Carr. I'm here to invite you to my coaching and mentoring portal, Modern Mystic Life. This high value, easy access portal is like having a spiritual mentor right in your pocket. You'll receive all the inspiration right there in your text messenger and you can also access it on your desktop. I will be delivering the tools and technology that are proven to evolve your abundant life inside and out. You will receive daily inspiration, education, and practices to help you evolve your life as a mystic and a human spiritual being. Plus, you will have access to my monthly workshops in which I teach and channel cutting edge spiritual content and also will give guidance, intuitive readings, and attunements right there in our group setting. I worked with Spirit to co-create and manifest the best way to support you and in the easiest fashion, and here it is. I'm very excited to co-create with you too. So welcome, my friend, to your modern mystic life. And now back to the show. And by the way, healing is also something we do as maintenance. So, you know, it's not only that there has to be an injury or an illness. It's just healing is something we do as a practice. 
So here is something that we can do either to help a specific issue or as a maybe a monthly little maintenance to flow healing and positive energy to our home, our family that, you know, contains animals. But this is also something you could do just with humans, by the way. And that is working with St. Francis. St. Francis of Assisi. This is what we call an ascended master. Now, this figure was a, was a priest, was a, uh, I think he was a, oh, was he a monk? Oh, was he a priest? He was Catholic, so, <laughs> and it was a long time ago. It, but he was in the Christian religion, and he was clergy. Let's just say he was clergy. And so he does have the ties to that specific paradigm of spirituality. But you do not, he transcends, as do all ascended masters, what, even if they were, let's say, Buddha. Obviously, Bo the Buddhist religion flows from Siddhartha. Uh, yet Buddha himself, transcended, is ascended master, is a Christ consciousness, one consciousness entity. Francis is as well. And Francis loved animals. Francis is the, I would say, patron saint of animal communication and healing. Francis, you know, the statues of him in paintings, you see him communing with animals, with tenderness and with so much love. So I actually work with St. Francis in my animal sessions when, you know, in general. And when we do have concerns of injury, illness, or another time is if there is a passing, Francis can help us with grief. And Francis can be like a doula, a death doula, and helping the animal, yes, to transition and carry the animal, but really he helps the humans because it's, we have a harder time with death than do animals. And that's just because, it's just because of the roles that we, we have. Not that anim, anim, our animals do love us and, and miss us and all of that, but they, they just are more attuned to eternity. They, 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 they know this isn't the end. And they're just capable of making the transition better than we are. And so Francis has compassion for all of that and can really help us with any kind of grief at all. So if you're working through loss or grief, Francis is, is someone who can really help you with that. But talking about animals and animal healing. So Francis, if you welcome him into your home, Welcome him into your session, your meditation, your healing session. Just simply have, uh, this is the first, I guess we'll say this is the first technique. Just get into a meditative state. Take those nice breaths, feeling very connected to love. And just imagine that you are opening the door to St. Francis and welcome him, welcoming him into your home to be of help, to be of guidance, to bring healing all around. That's like the first kind of imagery that you can welcome into your meditative state. And now for a more elaborate one that I want to offer you. And that is, while we're, as we're welcoming Francis in, we can actually set the space first. Maybe do our regular grounding kind of meditation, breathing, Whatever you do to induce yourself into that more blissful state, bring in that column of light to move through all of your energy, becoming very aligned. And if you're familiar with the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram, in that we actually call the corners. Or if you're familiar with the pagan practice or the witchcraft practice of calling the corners, all of these universal practices, they overlap with one another. So we will call the corners. And what this will look like is, is after you've done your grounding and you're expanding and you are having in mind that you are welcoming St. Francis in, you can orient yourself to either face or just know where the different cardinal directions are. You can get a compass on your phone and just like orient to it. You can just do the sitting or you can actually circumambulate, which means to face and turn, face and turn, face and turn. And you can even walk around your space, either the room or your house, 
going to the easternmost part of your home or room, or just turning or again, just allowing the orientation of your awareness as you are in your seated meditation. So calling the corners. With each corner, we are going to call the direction. We will call the archangel who oversees it. We will call the element that is oriented to it. And we will call the nature spirit, the elemental deva, who oversees the element and the direction. And it goes like this. As you are facing east, we tend to start facing east. We allow ourselves to be very humbled and also to be wisened and greatened up to this cardinal direction of east. And we call either in our mind, in our heart, or out loud, I summon the direction of the east. Archangel Raphael, element of air, nature deva sylph, bring us your healing light. And then turn toward your right hand, and now we're facing south, and we say, I summon the direction of south. Archangel Michael, element of fire, nature deva salamander. Turn toward the right again, now facing west. I summon the direction of the west. Archangel Gabriel, element of water. Nature Deva, Undine. Turning right again, now facing north. I summon the direction of the north. Archangel Uriel, element of earth. Nature Deva, Gnome. Bring us your healing light. And completing the circle, turning right again, back to the east. And as you are in this energy, feeling and communing and allowing all of this that you have invoked to imbue your energy, your home, your space, taking moments to sense and imagine the direction of east. The sun rises in the east. Raphael, the healing angel. He who sees that all is well. The element of air, which brings intelligence, clarity, and sends all of the nutrients to its right place. And the nature deva sylph, who oversees the element of air, the spiritual qualities being directed through these tenders of the element of air. And as you're on the direction of south, the direction of south overseen by Archangel Michael, Michael, who is the first creation of prime creator, the element of fire purifying and stoking passion, able to build up and burn down and bring a freshness to any situation, to bring warmth and metabolism. And we can also ask fire to come into alignment. Let's say if there is too much heat, we can ask fire to become mellower. And nature deva, salamander, who brings passion, who brings the directness who brings the capacity to be present, the holy fire. And as we're facing west, summoning the energy of the west, the sun sets in the west. And Gabriel, Archangel Gabriel, with so much clarity and love and expression, and Gabriel overseeing and bringing us the element of water with its clarity, with its nourishment with the emotional quality and the nature deva overseeing the element of water the undine who brings us those spiritual qualities and finally north with the archangel uriel overseeing earth with its depth of love its capacity to manifest and birth and with its capacity to also transmute and compost and alchemize. And the nature deva, gnome, with his wisdom and teaching, 
And with calling in all of these elements, and then we turn back to make the circle complete, all of these elements, these energies of the archangels, the directions, and the spiritual qualities of the elements, which actually, as we call them, can bring into alignment a new material reality, bringing it into all as well, all as whole. And as you're doing this then, whether you could choose to welcome St. Francis into that space or perhaps you asked him to come and preside over this ceremony of calling the corners angels, elements, and devas, welcoming him each in, all of the loving qualities, the manifestation principles of each of the devas and the elements, and how the devas, the nature spirits, and the fairies who would come into the attendance also bring that unconditional love, that ecosystem, that health and well-being. And then you can also call upon the overarching devas of your animals. You see, devas, deva is really like a title. It means overseer, or it means kind of a the master, the general, the one who is just overseeing the quality of the energies and helping to give the, um, you know, the, the authority, which is really to be the author of the situation. So yes, there are devas who oversee the elements, but there are devas who oversee all kinds of systems, including certain species, families, anything where there is a system or a society, there is a deva who is overseeing that lovingly and also organizing the energies. So let's say you have um, a, a German shepherd. You can call forth his family deva. You can call forth his species deva, the canine deva. You could call forth the deva that oversees his particular breed. And if, let's say with German shepherds, sometimes they have that hip dysplasia, you can you can assume that there is a deva who is overseeing that healing principle of helping with that particular quality of energy that can come back into alignment. And then finally, to enhance all of this energy, as a suggestion, you could recite the prayer of St. Francis. Now, this is associated with the Christian religion, particularly with Catholicism. But once again, where there is universal love and wisdom and healing, it transcends any of the religions who may have, you know, the, the lower paradigms that may have also been associated with it. If it's inspired, it means of spirit. And I find the prayer of St. Francis to be so beautiful and so inspiring. And I do recite it sometimes even just in portion in my own med meditation and prayer, because it is so beautiful. Now, the first word of this prayer is Lord. If you're not comfortable with the word Lord, you can just drop it, or you can say God, or you can say Spirit, or you can say love, anything you like, anything that helps you to really connect with this unconditional love pouring through humans to animals, to the earth, with the earth, with Spirit, this full circle of the expression of creation. And so as you can imagine, this healing space is set up. You can just allow, and I'm going to recite for you the prayer of St. Francis here in a moment, but I'm going to end with that because now if you can just mingle in the, this beautiful space of healing and openness and the highest good and the greatest blessing, and how may we love one another? How may we continue to love one another? welcoming in and you may feel the energies healing and pouring into the space and the place aligning balancing vitalizing and of course we are working in unconditional love and there are times when it is the time for transition and so we know that if or when it is that time that there are no mistakes about it and right now we are as the humans who sometimes we feel frail or we feel confused, we are just bringing ourselves into alignment with how to be the love, how to be the service in the situation. And then we know that that will inform actions if that is necessary to complete the healing action. Right now we're just mingling in the loving healing energy. 
And if you would like to recite the prayer of St. Francis, say it aloud or say it in your heart. God, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it's in giving that we receive, and it's in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it's in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I don't know about you, but I can feel that prayer as something to cover other areas of what is happening on our planet. Where there is difficulty, where there is pain and suffering, to align ourselves with the way to be, and then from the being, what to do. But the being, the energy, is fundamental. The being is spirit. And to that end, if you may be thinking about certain things that are happening on our planet, I am with you in this. And I thank you for shining your light on our beautiful world, for loving animals, for loving your human friends and family, for our brothers and sisters, for loving our planet, and for being a gift of spirit and a gift of Mother Gaia. Thanks for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. Thank you.